Hey there, we're going to take you through a series of videos that will give you a general overview of BISTAL 360 features. In this video, you will learn the fundamentals of data monitoring. We created data monitoring in BISTAL 360 to extend the capabilities of process monitoring. Process monitoring allows us to monitor for transaction volume in BISTAL. So instead of just monitoring if the solution is up and running and with the desired configuration, we can also look into the messages going through the system and if they are meeting the expected volumes. So let's see how we can do that. I've created two process monitoring schedules, so let's take a look at them. So to configure process monitoring, we have to provide a monitoring name, and in this case I chose allow low volume of messages. The next option is to define how many messages do we expect to be processed in this particular process monitoring. In this case, I'm saying I need at least nine messages to be processed for it to be healthy. In the next section, we can see the ports that are being monitored. So we're looking for each of these receive ports and send ports to see if they processed at least nine messages. In the next section, we can set up the monitoring times by defining the frequency. So if we want to do a daily validation, a weekly validation, or a monthly validation. We can also choose when we want to process monitoring to evaluate the message count. It can be all day or during specific business hours. And how frequently as well during the day, we might want to check if at the end of the business day we process the expected volumes or if we process the expected volumes at specific time intervals. In this case, to monitor every 15 minutes for the processing of nine messages. So let's see the other process monitoring I created. I created this one just to show that you can choose different options. In this case, I call this alert for monthly invoice processing. So this is an event that happens once a month and goes through a particular port and we want to know that at least one message was processed by that particular port. So to set up process monitoring, we needed to set up the frequency, which in this case we chose monthly because we want a specific day in the month, in this case the 10 of each month. Then we are monitoring these within some specific business hours, 9 to 5, and we are validating every 15 minutes. So when the BISTAL 360 monitoring service executes this process monitoring, it will follow the rules that we just described on each of the process monitors and output if it was successful or unsuccessful, and then send the appropriate notifications. Let's see how we expanded process monitoring to monitor other data within the system. So let's start with message box data. I also pre-created the message box data monitoring. And the idea with message box data monitoring is that we can monitor based on the result of a query. And in this case, it's the same kind of queries you can run in BISTAL 360 message box query. So first, this starts very similar to process monitoring. So we choose which alarm we want to associate this with, what is the name. In this case, I'm looking for suspended messages in a BISTAL environment. So instead of looking for specific messages within an application, like we provide in the other section of BISTAL 360 monitoring, we can run a query that does a global validation of suspended messages. So on the data filter here, what I selected was the suspended service instances. And I didn't have any filter, but I could have filters to look for specific suspended messages within the system. Essentially, you could filter this by any available field for each of the queries available. Then we should set up when do we want to be notified or the thresholds. In this case, we have available a warning thresholds and error thresholds. So I define that I want these to be in a warning threshold if I have more than zero suspended messages and in an error state if this has more than 20 messages. In the notification, I chose to include the service instance details. This allows me to know the exact details of the suspended messages identified. And then the next section is similar to process monitoring. This is when do we want to run these validations. And in this case, I chose to run these on a daily basis. It runs throughout the day and it monitors for one hour segments. In this next section, we also allow you to filter the query based on a time filter. The first option is the option where we don't want to filter. But if we choose the second option, 
we will be filtering one of the daytime fields available in this query by the start and end time of the monitoring interval. So in this case, it will be a one hour interval that will be applied to one of these fields. So in, in this case, it doesn't make sense, but I'll show other data monitoring where I am doing this filter. In the case of the message box data monitoring, we can also take an action after the monitoring execution. The options available are that you take an action every time we check up the monitoring or when you have an error condition or a warning condition. And the actions available are the operations for service instances, which are the result set of a message box query. So we can resume, suspend and terminate them. Now let's take a look at tracking data monitoring. So in, in a very similar way to the message box data monitoring, we can monitor tracking data based on a query. So let's go into the details of this tracking data monitoring. In this case, I'm monitoring for transmission failures in the tracking database. So I need to specify a query that finds me these transmission failures. In this case, the query target is the tracked message events and filtered by a field called event type when it's equal to transmission failure to be retried. So this defines the query I want to execute. In the next section, we will define when we want to be notified. And this is our warning threshold and error threshold. So I want to be notified when there is any message that matches the condition and it goes into error if I have more than 10. In the next section, we define how frequently we want to execute this validation. And in this case, I chose to do a daily validation within business hours of 9 to 7 p.m. and of time slots of 30 minutes. In this particular case, I also choose to do a time filter because I want to look for retries that happen during a particular period. And so I'm filtering here the start and time column. So now let's look at BAM data monitoring. In the case of BAM data monitoring, we want to target the BAM views. So here on the filter condition of this data monitoring, we have the available BAM views in this environment. So we can see here all the available BAM views. And then within the BAM view, we need to choose the activity. In this case, I only have one activity. And I can also filter on additional fields, which I'm doing here. So I'm filtering on process name equals to error. Then I specify my notification condition where I want to be notified if there are more than 10 records in this BAM view and this will be in an error condition if I have more than 20 records in this BAM view. I'm running this on a daily basis between 9 to 5 and I only do a validation at the end of the business day. In this case I'm filtering a daytime field which is one of the available fields in this BAM activity. Now let's take a look at EDI data monitoring. In this case, what we are looking for is to alert when acknowledgements are not received successfully. So the query I have to define is targeting the interchange acknowledgement status, and I'm filtering for a status equal to acknowledgement expected. This will show me the messages where acknowledgements are expected and not yet accepted. I set up my threshold to say, I wanna be notified if there is any message without the acknowledgement and I will be in an error condition if, if I have more than 100. I'm monitoring these on a weekly basis and I chose Monday to Friday as the days to do this validation. It runs all day at the end of the business day. And we are not applying any daytime filter. We want to validate all the EDI messages that have not received acknowledgements. So let's take a look at the last one, which is the ESP data monitoring. In the case of ESP data monitoring, what I want to look for is any critical faults that come up in ESP exception management. So to specify that query, we need to go and target ESP data and then filter the severity equals to error. This will give me all the faults that match this particular severity. And then I can specify when I want to be notified. In this case, I want to be notified if I have any of these faults with this severity, and I will be in an error condition if I have more than 20. I set up these to run every day within my business hours and running in two hour slots. I'm not applying any daytime filter, which means this will look to the overall fault list. 
So now I've gone through all the sections and explaining how can you set up monitoring for each of these specific data sources. So the setup we've seen describes the rules on how we expect data to be in BizTalk. And once this setup is done, BizTalk 360 monitoring service will be continuously evaluating according to the rules you specified and then saving the results which can be seen in the monitoring dashboard. So let's take a look at the monitoring dashboard. The monitoring dashboard is essentially a calendar view of all the executions that the monitoring service does for each of the data monitoring queries. What we can see here in the month view of the data monitoring dashboard is for which days there is data monitoring data. If we click on one of the days, we will load the information relative to that particular day. Then on the right hand side, we can see the day view of data monitoring. And here we can see all the data monitoring executions represented, where we can see the start time and end time of each of the validations. We can also have a visual cue of the success or failure of that validation. And it's also color coded so that we can easily understand which type of query it is. Then we can also choose which of the data monitoring sections we want to have available, and we can choose to disable one of these sections so that we don't have all of the information in the, in the calendar view. We can also mouse over in one of these entries to see more information. And if we are interested in all the details, we can click to see all the execution details. In this case, we can see we're looking for suspended messages in the BizTalk environment. Here are the actual thresholds, and this is the reason why it failed. So we had 505 instances, and we wanted this to be less than one. In this case, we don't see any filtered conditions because this was a generic query. But if I click on a different query, I can see the details of that execution. As you can see here in this ESB query, we're looking for critical faults and we don't have any other filter, but we have a filter for severity. And we can see a different one. In this case, we were doing a BAM data query and these are the conditions applied because I filtered that particular query by daytime. You can see here the daytime filters as well as the other filter I manually created. We expect by having this visual representation of what is the time that was validated, what was the query executed, you can better understand how is the data in your system behaving. And if it's not behaving according to what you expect, you can get the notifications and make your system much more predictable, stable, and easy to run. So now let's take a look at the notification email that you receive. So here we have a notification email from a message box query, the one looking for suspended messages in a BizTalk environment. And here you can see the query executed, as well as the service instance details. And so this information will help you understanding that your data monitoring is not running as you expect, and then you should go and review to know exactly what's happening. In this case, we even give the additional details so that you have a better understanding of what's happening without having to go into BizTalk 360. I hope you find data monitoring quite powerful and useful for your scenarios, and you start using it anytime soon. This is all from data monitoring.